Hello YouTube, this is Les. In this video I'm going to show my sixth miniature internal combustion engine. Uh, later in the video I will show the details and the running of this engine. But first I'm going, going to show the uh, pictures and descriptions of the of the other engines that I've built starting with number one which is a uh, little flathead style uh, internal combustion engine um, and this one is built with a block of three-quarter inch aluminum and it has brass sides which hold the bearings for the crankshaft. It has external timing gears. All of these engines are spark ignition. They're all four-stroke and they all run on um, a mixture of Coleman fuel with a little bit of um, oil Marvel oil and in, in my case uh, for lubrication this one has the the exhaust and the carburetor on the same mounting that mounts on the end of the block uh, all of the engines are similar in uh, bore and stroke. I pretty mu much worked out the uh, internal clearances required for the uh, engine and uh, pretty much followed those throughout the building of the subsequent engines. This is the second engine and you can find uh, videos of each of these engines on my channel uh, where I describe them in detail and uh, show them running. This is also a vertical cylinder engine, air-cooled, spark ignition. This one has the exposed rocker arm, rocker push rod and rocker arms and uh, valves in the head of the engine. The uh, engine uses the same large external timing gears. The engine exhausts on the back side and the carburetor is on the front side. This engine is also made with the kind of the sandwich style of center aluminum um, crankcase with uh, brass sheets on each side that hold the main bearings for the crankshaft. Engines number three and four are both hit and miss engines. Engine number three is a horizontal cylinder hit and miss engine. Um, the flywheel governor is shown here. It's water cooled. There's a little tank for the water on the top. This is the first engine that I built that has uh, an atmospheric intake valve. In other words, um, it's just operated by the suction of the engine. There isn't a, uh, a mechanism like a push rod and rocker arm to push the valve in uh, on the intake. It is atmospheric. The the exhaust valve uh, is operated by a camshaft and uh, rocker arm, however. 
The fuel tank is on the back and it goes through the engine frame, comes out the front and feeds into the little carburetor. This engine has a uh, an aluminum frame but it's not the uh, the style of the previous engines. The fourth engine is also a hit and miss uh, but the variation of this engine is that it is a vertical air cool cylinder and I went back to the sandwich type crankcase with the aluminum block and the uh, the brass side plates that are bolted on uh, which contain the crankshaft main bearings um, the fuel tank is attached to the carburetor on this one with the needle valve on the top. The exhaust valve comes out the opposite side. On this side you can see the flywheel governor that makes it a hit and miss engine. And this is the second engine that I built with an atmospheric intake valve right here. Again, atmospheric intake valve, meaning that the valve is operated by the vacuum pressure of the in engine when it, when it is on the uh, intake stroke. It has a very, uh, these valves have a very weak spring um, so that they can get opened by just the, the uh, vacuum created by the engine. All of the engines have a way, they're either, uh, in the case of the previous engine, um, the connecting rod is uh, exposed so it can be oiled, or I have this little removable plug that I can uh, I can oil the uh, connecting rod, the, the connecting rod big end with a, a little needle oiler like this. So engine number five, this is engine number five. It goes back to um, not being a hit and miss engine. Uh, a flathead. The valves can be seen underneath. Again, the frame is made with the sandwiching of the aluminum central crankcase with um, these brass plates bolted on either side which contain the main bearings. In this engine, um, I had thought about uh, enclosing the uh, the the valve shaft bearings or <laughs> the valve gears timing gears uh, and in order to make them smaller so they could be uh, enclosed in a case I added the central idler gear um, so the whole gearing arrangement is much smaller than the uh, original engines that had to have a larger gear so they could cover the the spacing needed between the crankshaft and the camshaft but then in the end I decided not to put a cover on it uh, it would have been fairly easy to do since it fits within the the dimensions of the um, crankcase Uh, also on this engine, I built it with the carburetor being directly attached or the, or the fuel tank being directly attached to the carburetor. So the, the fuel is just kind of sucked up into a tube into the carburetor, this being the needle valve. And uh, 
that's about it for this engine. And that leads me to my engine number six, which looks very much like engine number three, horizontal cylinder. In this case, though, it's air-cooled rather than water-cooled, and it is not a hit-and-miss engine. Um, but it has the atmospheric intake valve, and um, it has the same type of frame as the other horizontal engine um, with the exposed um, crank and connecting rod so that can be easily oiled uh, prior to running the engine each time. So with that I will proceed to running the engine number six.